All right, you ready? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hyundai channel. My name is Gabby. And I'm Charlotte. And today we're filming two very exciting three row SUVs mm -hmm. exclusive to Kia's lineup. Number one, we know and love, it's the Kia Telluride. This vehicle is a flagship in our lineup yep. of vehicles. Um, it offers luxury, performance, towing capacity, just about anything you can think of. The Telluride offers it in one of its many trim levels. Here in Canada, we even have the X-Line and the X-Pro that offer a more rugged look, feel, and increased towing capacity. But Charlotte, What's new on the Kia lineup? I think something that is very new specifically to our dealership is we have the brand new Kia EV9. So this is an all electric SUV, three row SUV, and its size is gonna be very similar to the Telluride. But something that's super interesting is that these vehicles might actually be a little bit more alike than you may have initially anticipated. Yes. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. <laughs> Don't mind the noise in the background. <laughs> We may have a special guest today. <laughs> so me and Charlotte are gonna take you through the interior and the exterior of both these vehicles, highlighting some of the common themes and then some of the major, major differences. As you can imagine, there's a couple things that are quite, quite different. Spoiler alert, one has something under the hood, the other and one, one has nothing. So I think we'll start off with the exterior, hop mm -hmm. on in and then just talk about everything there is to know. We will dedicate a solid 10 to 15 minutes, maybe less. Yep. at the end of the video to answer your guys' live questions. Now, with that being said, we are a real dealership. We really sell these cars. We are located in Brantford, Ontario, but we also have a dealership in Owen Sound, Ontario, servicing both Hyundai and Kia vehicles. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. <laughs> I'll grab this. Okay. So I want to start off with the price of both of these vehicles. The Telluride, this is the SX Limited trim level. So this is what we mostly go to when we're looking for all the bells and whistles and the captain chair seating. This one is priced at $59,395 Canadian. Now for the Kia EV9, which again is fully electric, we are priced at $62,995 Canadian, plus you get the $5,000 federal rebate. So $5,000 less than $62,995. I'll start talking about the EV9 first. And one thing I want to highlight is what's not under the hood. So of course, this is an electric vehicle. We have a 99.8 kilowatt hour electric motor. Um, of course, fully electric range of 489 kilometers. You can plug this vehicle in, charge it. You can even get up to 100 kilometers in 4.5 minutes. So very, very fast charging. The range on this specific trim level is great. This is a wind, wind, wind rear wheel drive. However, if you are someone who's looking for something that ha does have all-wheel drive, an extra 2,000 will get you to the land all-wheel drive trim level, which also includes terrain modes like snow, mud, and sand. We'll take a good look at the front end. You can see we have some very sharp styling. The Telluride has a more classic look to it, and the Kia EV9 is going to look a little bit more futuristic. And it may not be something you're used to seeing on the road, especially these wheels. These are 19 inch alloys. Um, you can love them or hate them. I think they're phenomenal. And this wheel design also has an emphasis on efficiency. So that's what gets this vehicle to 489 kilometers of all electric range while being this big and this comfortable. Now, Charlotte, you made a great point about the comfort of these cars. So <laughs> they're both very, very big. Um, now, how much space? does the Telluride lose or gain over the Kia EV9? So that's a great question. When it comes to the actual exterior of the vehicle, uh, we do get about 10 millimeters more in length on the EV9, but we lose a little bit on the width. So the Telluride mm -hmm. is slightly, slightly wider. Mm -hmm. Again, about 10, mil 10 millimeters, not enough to make a huge, huge difference. And then also when it comes to space on the mm -hmm. inside, we'll take a look at that after, but there's some differences between the first, second and third mm -hmm. rows. You will have a charge door, of course, as opposed to your regular fuel door. You have a target or state of charge indicator right over here with some illumination that is also an LED. Every light on this vehicle is an LED from the entry trim level all the way to the top. You can expect a full bright experience both inside and out. You'll also get great convenience features like a smart power lift gate. So again, even on the base trim, you can expect this kind of thing, which you may not get in the Kia Telluride. For seating, all vehicles or all Kia EV9s come standard with three row passenger seats. You can either get a seven seater configuration like I have showcased today or a six seater, which would have the removal of that very center seat in the second row. There's tons of room, lots more legroom that is usable in the Kia EV9 as opposed to the Telluride. Um, however, our interiors are very, very different. We'll get into more of that later. Then coming around to the very front, we'll tie things off with the Kia Telluride. So wheels, wheel arches, they are plastic molded. 
One thing I really do love that is similar to the Kia Telluride is the extension of the door. So it actually covers your rocker panels, meaning that when you get salty Canadian winters, your pant legs don't get dirty as you get into your vehicle. <laughs> All right, the crowd is crazy today. Now under the hood, we have a 3.8 liter V6 gasoline engine on the Kia Telluride. Now this, of course, gasoline, put fuel in it. You can expect 5,000 pounds of towing capacity as opposed to the 2,000 on that rear wheel drive Kia EV9. You can also expect poor fuel efficiency, <laughs> slightly <laughs> poor fuel efficiency compared to an EV. One thing's for sure, you're gonna pay way more in gas in the Telluride than with the EV9. That's right. <laughs> Oh, here in Canada, the Kia Telluride is standard with all-wheel drive, and like I mentioned on the EV9, you go up one trim level, it's $2,000 upgrade to get the all-wheel drive. Um, for horsepower, you're looking at 291 horsepower with 262 pound-feet of torque. Again, same thing, full LED headlights, beautiful aggressive front grille, there's definitely a lot more things going on to the styling of the Telluride as opposed to the EV9, which kind of has a more blank face um, and a futuristic yet minimalistic approach. So let me know what you guys think about the design elements. Shelly, do you want me to grab the camera? Yeah, okay. that would be great. Show some off, so show off that design. <laughs> Charlotte's gonna go be a super mom for a second. <laughs> All right, for wheels, we have 20 inch alloys. And again, this is the SX Limited trim level, which is a higher end trim. So you're gonna get some more, I guess, stylish finishes. You're also gonna get some chrome accents around your windows and your pillars, and then along the belt line of the vehicle. Check that out. Just like what I showed on the Kia EV9, our doors are extended to cover this area here so you can expect your pants to stay nice and clean as you enter during cold and slushy winter weather. <laughs> All right, Charlotte. Here's something that's different, fuel door. On the Kia Telluride, you can still expect to only have to put regular unleaded fuel in, so there's no premium, which is honestly quite a nice savings here in Canada, that's for sure. Um, again, on the SX trim level, SX Limited, you can still get things like your power lift gate. Size of the trunk is very similar. Usability of the trunk is similar. However, we do lose a little bit of space behind the third row. I don't know if you guys can pick that up on camera, but there is a little bit of a difference. Let's see if we can compare. Materials are a bit different too. You get black carpet on the Telluride and then gray in the EV9. It is worth mentioning that back here, we do have our um, seat folding buttons and an AC or household. Even <laughs> well, Pat's here. It's, it's okay. Pat Hart to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we have a household outlet right over here as well too. So for any sort of camping you can expect to do, the EV9 might be your best buddy. Back to the Telluride though. We're gonna do lots of back and forth today. <laughs> All right, on the left side of the Telluride's um, cabin space, you can see we have our second row power folding buttons with a 12 volt charger. And that's about it for back here. So no household unit back here to plug in, but lots of space. Charlotte, do you wanna talk about the interior and what can we expect for tech? I would love to. All right. All right, so if you guys have not seen our full walk around of the EV9, we have posted that last week and I highly recommend you check it out for going in through all of the nitty gritty. We've also done the same thing on this Telluride as shown. So if you want a, a more in-depth look on either of those vehicles, please subscribe to the channel and check out those videos. They will be, of course, on our channel. <laughs> but let's talk about some of the main differences and similarities and I'll have Gabby just give a brief overview. That way you guys can get a good look at what the cabin looks like. Now, one of the big differences Gabby was just showing there is of course there's gonna be styling differences, but also the controls for where your seat are and some of the convenience features like your heated or ventilated seats and heating steering wheel. Mm -hmm. On the Telluride, it's going to be very classic uh, where we've seen it before in the center or up at the top, yeah, in the center. Mm -hmm. So there are your controls for your heated seat and also your ventilated seats. And then also we're going to have our controls uh, for climate control, it's going to be more actual buttons, not a screen like what we'll see in the EV9. And then also you have the tool, no, dual. <laughs> I was gonna say two dual, but that doesn't make sense. You have your dual 12.3 inch screens. Yeah. So of course that's going to be your instrument cluster and also your infotainment. And now in the EV9, you're gonna have both of those screens, but in the center, you're gonna have a dedicated five inch climate control menu too. Now with the with this vehicle, you do have the option for the 10 inch heads up display. So that is available and that is available on select EV9 trims as well. Not showcased on the one that we do have today. 
Other than that, I'm trying to think of some of the other differences. When it comes to the front row of space, you actually are going to get about 15 millimeters more of leg room, max leg room in the Telluride. So if every millimeter is what counts for you if you are extremely tall and space really matters, that might be some, uh, a bigger consideration when it comes to the Telluride. But for right now, do you want to hop over and look at the front of the EV9 or do we want to do the yeah. second and third row? I might. Do you want to drop the window down on the Telluride, sure. the passenger side window? And I can showcase both. I will say, um, I've spent quite a lot of time in the Telluride. I love the styling. I love the faux wood grain trim. The EV9 was a little bit different for me when I hopped in and a lot of it was a little bit more blank. Yes. However, the more time I spend in it, the more I realize it's not blank. It's just different. Yes. It's a different approach, that's for sure. <laughs> and that is exactly what it is, and that's why even though these vehicles are so similar in size and even have fairly similar price points depending on the trims that you are cross shopping, they are incredibly different and a lot of it is going to come down, aside from you know electric versus ICE, a lot of it is going to come down to styling. So, and that's a huge thing of what we see. So, mm -hmm. even with these screens, as we don't have the same curvature that we do have when it comes in those dual screens in the Telluride, you can see that they are a lot more straight. And in the center, you can see we have that dedicated five inch uh, climate control screen. Let's see if we can but get it. Other than that, we, we still have these lovely dual screens, 12 and a quarter inches. Yeah. And we're also running a new software on the EV9. So it's different than what we see in the Telluride, different than what we've seen in the past. We are running that new software, which gives us a nice new look. I'm gonna hop in real quick and yeah. show it. And even if you wanna cycle through the menu. So. Now, I have to say one of the biggest things that I love that the EV9 has is the addition of a wireless Apple CarPlay and Android what? Auto, <laughs> despite having these bigger screens. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the Telluride, we don't quite have that option yet on this vehicle. It is still going to be a wired CarPlay or Android Auto. But here on the EV9, we finally, finally get that new software. We get that mm -hmm. wireless CarPlay, which I know so many people have been wanting for a long time myself included. Yeah. And it's incredibly responsive as well. It's not lagging. I don't find there to be any disrupt in uh, connectivity or anything along those lines. It's incredibly well done. So nice to see. <laughs> and like Charlotte mentioned earlier, the Kia EV9 is available with a heads up display. Um, all trim levels come standard with these screens. So your dual 12.3 inch display with the addition of this climate control panel, which is a first for us. Yes, we have not seen anything like that before. So really you have three screens in uh, in the cockpit for the driver to access. Mm -hmm. Now, if some of you are concerned about saying, you know, that's a really inconvenient location for, you know, the passenger because we do have uh, tri-zone climate control actually in this vehicle, you still have the controls that you're able to access. And you can see that in the center, we have a floating center console, which means we don't have all of those buttons um, and everything like that, that we do have on the Telluride. So that gives you a little bit more usable storage space, but in this vehicle, you do lose about 10, uh, 15 millimeters of leg room but I still lots notice. of storage space. <laughs> no, a lot of people, that's the thing, is a lot of people aren't going to notice. You know, a lot of people are gonna look at this and think the sizing is probably identical. There are slight variances, of course, but a lot of it is going to be very, very similar. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna quickly point out something that took me a while to get used to, and that was <laughs> I know what it is. the seat climate control. It was a freezing cold day when I got this car, and I was, I wanted warmth. The heated steering wheel, the heated and ventilated seats are on the door for both the driver and passenger. Mm -hmm. And again, like I mentioned earlier, this is not the trim level, the top trim level of the Kia V9. No. This is one up from the base and we mm -hmm. already have ventilated seats. Which is incredible. Yes. Another huge difference is where is the start button? Oh girl, <laughs> <laughs> right over here. I can't even film it right now. It's a tricky spot, but mounted on the steering column, we have our drivetrain or transmission and our start button. This took a while to find, that's for sure. <laughs> I will also point out that we have the inclusion of drive mode select so you can cycle between eco, normal, sport, my drive, which is custom, and then snow mode. So even though this isn't an all wheel drive, mm -hmm. we still have some sort of terrain We mode. still have terrain modes. Mm -hmm. Well, at least the option for snow mode. Another huge thing is that we do have the option for a custom drive mode, which we have not seen before either. Yep. And it's not available on the Telluride. And not available on the Telluride. Yeah. Um, someone asked if we can register seat, and I'm guessing you mean memory seat, not on this trim level, but it is available on um, the land all wheel drive with premium package. Yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't quite got all of the, the lingo for the EV9 in my head mm -hmm. yet because it's so different than what we've seen, but, mm -hmm. but let's take a look at the second row and then we'll also hop into the third row. So I'll have Gabby give a pan. You can see we've got one seat up just to show what it looks like. And then also our second row seats. 
Now, like I said, is you're actually going to get a little bit more leg room in the second and third row of the EV9, and a lot of that comes down to how this vehicle is configured. So, as you can see, it's an electric vehicle, which we know. So we do not have a drive shaft running through the center of the vehicle. This is built on Hyundai and Kia's um, eGMP modular platform. I understand the M and P I've already said, and it's fine. We'll move on. And that means it's a skateboard style platform. So we've got, you know, your rear motor mount. And if you're all wheel drive, your front motor mount in the front and rear, and then it's flat. So this is where your battery is going to be underneath the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you're allowed to have a completely flat floor. So instead of sitting in the middle of the Telluride where my feet would be slightly elevated, I'm able to get that extra usable leg room. Another thing is also we have tons of storage space. We have cubbies down here. We've got cup holders, lots of places to put things. Still uh, a lot of similar tech elements in the back, USB-Cs, pockets, everything along those lines. So, mm -hmm. But it's nice seeing uh, how the different configurations of the vehicle, how that really does affect a little bit of legroom that you can have. Mm -hmm. So yeah. How do we get into the back? Well, let's see. You can see the one seat's up, so we may as well go over there. Okay. <laughs> But spoiler, we have this button right over here that'll lift the seat. All right. So super easy to get into the back. Uh, you just simply press the button, you're able to bring the seat up and now you can go and take a look at the third row. I'll have Gabby give us a showcase from this end instead of just from the trunk. Okay. And you can see the space that we have back there and also how well the third row seats fold to give you a little bit more usable cargo space should you need. There is so. a lot of space back there. I will hop back here because although I know it's minimal, I actually did notice a slight difference between sitting in the third row of the Telluride, which I've done many times before, and sitting here in the EV9. Put my headrest up too. So again, you're gonna save a little bit more on the cargo space back here. You're gonna have a little bit more. Um, it's incredibly comfortable. I'm honestly surprised that I feel like I should have my seat, the seat further back and I should be knocking my knees or something like that. But uh, if you are, shopping for an electric vehicle where you want to get the most amount of passenger space, cargo space, this is going to be a huge, mm -hmm. it's gonna blow your mind. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> to be quite honest. There is so much space back here. Seriously, so much space. It's very comfortable. The seats are comfortable, especially given the fact that they are synthetic. Mm -hmm. I think that Kia, Hyundai, and Genesis have some of the best synthetic leather in the game right now. I agree with you there. All right, now what do you think of the rear of the Kia Telluride? Because, I mean, your family has them. Yeah. Um, we literally rode in the back of a Kia Telluride to get to the airport to LA, and we yes. stuffed that truck. We stuffed that truck. I was in the back. Yes. <laughs> um, so seriously, luggage for five people, and yep. we do not pack light. So we I all I did pretty good. Yeah, we all fit in there. <laughs> yeah. So let's take a look at what we've got going on in the rear. So obviously we have a little bit of a different setup instead of having uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, one, two, three, four. This is seven seater, yeah. yeah seven, that one's a seven seater yeah. too. Yeah, I was like, hold on. <laughs> so we can see a little bit of the differences here. You can see the slight hump. Now having the mat over top, it does kind of cover oh, it up. It conceals it a lot. Yeah. But if you had, um, if you were going down and you were driving in the eight seater and you actually had a center seat here, it's going to be a little bit more noticeable. I'll try to hover between. You can see where my legs are. <laughs> if only we had a, an eight seater here today. That's pretty official. That's pretty official. But you can see the slight differences that we do have. Um, yeah, I still find it incredibly spacious back here. Mm -hmm. You know, for someone who does not have the home that is able to power an electric vehicle, um, if I am, you know, going to continue expanding my family, the Telluride is on my list of vehicles that I want. That is what I want when it comes to being, you know, a, a capable and well-equipped family vehicle. Yep. So I don't feel like I'm losing any space or anything like that, even though I have been in the EV9, especially back here. And uh, yeah, I love a lot of the convenience features, still have the pockets, cup holders. Down here, we do have a household outlet. I know in the EV9, it's in the back, but we do have one up here in the center, 12 volt, everything along those lines. And still these seats are incredibly easy to maneuver as well. Mm -hmm. I love these seats because of how easy they are to control. Yes. So um, how do you get into the back? Look at that. Just the press of a button. Yeah. <laughs> so that is, oh, I'm dreading the day when it's, you know, trying to get all the kids into the car and the school line up and someone's crying and it's cold and you can just simply press a button and buckle everyone. Oh, 
dreading the day, but I know it'll be easier. <laughs> <laughs> and now I can hop into the back seat, incredibly easy. So I will sit back here to show you guys the space. So you can, you can tell a little bit of a difference. This seat is a little bit more reclined too, but I do lose some space. This is obviously going to be more elevated as well. So my feet are, and my knees are sitting up a little bit higher than they would be in the EB9, which I think is where the key difference for um, why it does, the third row specifically in the EB9, feels so spacious. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Should we do a quick walk around of both vehicles? Yeah. So the outside, inside. I'm curious as to what everyone thinks. I will say, so if you guys could tell by the plate, this is Pat's car. Um, <laughs> he own, has a Kia Telluride. He also has a Kia EV6. And when you mix those two cars together, you essentially get the Kia EV9. Right, Charlotte? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Math. Um, but yeah, check it out. So very different aesthetics when it comes to just the exterior lighting and the body. Um, very, very different. I think the EV9 looks much larger on camera. I think so much, too. Much, much bigger. I guess the fact that it's white doesn't help either, but. Well, um, I think even just the rear is, um, there's a lot less going on per se in the rear. Like you have the hidden wiper blade. You don't mm -hmm. have the excess Telluride badging that you do have on the Telluride, you exactly. know, stuff like that. Cleans it up a little bit. This Tail is, lights are huge. Yeah, massive. It's gonna be more of your futuristic, techie looking vehicle as opposed mm -hmm. to your classic luxurious looking mm -hmm. SUV, which I think the Telluride really encompasses. Charge door is very nicely well hidden, I will say. Um, I like the way they integrated the turn signal repeaters on the door or the side mirrors. Um, you get front and rear parking sensors on the wind and rear wheel drive, which is great. Lots of frunk space. <laughs> So, of course, there's nothing under the hood on this one except your huge frunk. It has a weight limit of 85 pounds, too, which is crazy to think about. It's actually so big, you have a frunk release. I never thought we would have needed that, but... <laughs> so, yeah, very, you never, very different. You never think you need it until you do. <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, check out the front grill of this one. A lot more going on. Um, you have your stacked headlights and then your stacked daytime running lights at the very bottom. And then right back to the EV9. It's a little bit more blank. All right. On that note, let's uh, let's talk about it. <laughs> let's talk about it, yes. So we want to know what you guys have to say <laughs> about either vehicle. Um, now, I know EV might not be for everyone. Some people are not ready for it. Some people do not want to yeah. move to EVs, and that's OK. Um, but were you surprised with how similar some of these cars are or mm -hmm. how different they are? Let us know. Uh, <laughs> I just get a lot of comments about Pat's plates. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. got those for him, <laughs> like, I think last year for Christmas. Oh, my goodness. I, I know Your funny. mom doesn't like the plates. My mom does not like the plates, and this was actually her car. Yeah. That's the irony. It's after his dealer plate. His dealer plate starts with 007. That's why he always takes it. Yeah, that was oh, so funny. That's why he always took that plate. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um... Does the all-wheel drive come from two motors or transfer dual motor? So you'll have a front-mounted motor mm -hmm. as well too. Which is also why we have such a large frunk on mm -hmm. this vehicle because it's rear-wheel drive. Yes. Um, any tips to avoid a $60,000 bill if the battery gets damaged from road debris? There have been a few Ionic 5s reporting this issue. Yes, so we have actually filmed a video mm -hmm. about this. Um, waiting on Pat's okay to post it or not. Um, so I've heard about what happened in Vancouver. Um, and it's a very unfortunate situation. I will say we did some research on our end and when we first received electric vehicles, it was the Kia Soul. So that started in 2016 and we had that same Soul and battery till 2019. The originating price was about $28,000 for replacement on that car. It's now just over 3,000. So the prices are ridiculous right now. It's more than the car is brand new. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. We understand that. Um, they are going to level out in the near future. Right now, it's so hard to even get these cars. Ionic 5s, Kia EV6s are still a hefty wait time. So majority of the production is being made for new vehicles and not necessarily replacements, and hence why the price is so high. Mm -hmm. um, now, Charlotte, can you, <laughs> do you have any? <laughs> Girly Pop, you filmed the video, not me. Yeah. <laughs> 
it's it's hard. It's yeah, it's, it's hard. It's a horrible situation. At the end of the day, is we always want um, our people to be taken care of, yeah. and that you know that extends to everyone who's and who's a customer of the brand. I will say a majority of the replacements necessary for Ionic fives or EV nines have all EV nines, EV sixes have all been warranty. Mm -hmm. um, that one was a freak incident. Yeah, there was damage, right? Damage and not um, necessarily a manufacturer defect or anything. Um, it's so hard because each individual situation is different and unless you're that dealer, you never really know. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Um, a couple of people were asking about some of the tech in the EV9. People mm -hmm. were asking about the fingerprint, um, which of course this vehicle does have. Yep. We, uh, we have not been able to do too much info on the fingerprint, but yes, it does have it and you should be able to unlock your driver profile. We're anticipating being able to start the vehicle, everything along along those lines with it. And uh, a couple about the column mounted uh, shifter too. So I was mm -hmm. thinking, you know, this is such a weird place for the start button to be, but then I'm like, well, I put my key sense. in the ignition for years and it was on it was right there. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, it's not actually that weird. I'm just used to push button now. <laughs> it's so weird. Everything's kind of going back to yep. the way it was. Yeah. And it's just, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, I'm all for it. Um, let's see. The EV9 looks great. I own a Tesla Model Y and would love to get an EV9. Price is an issue. Maybe Kia will lower the price at some point. So I don't know if you're here in Canada. Now I will say here in Canada, I think the price point's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So this one, which is extremely well equipped, is priced at $62,995 plus we get the $5,000 federal rebate. Yeah. That makes this vehicle very affordable and almost the exact same price as the Kia Telluride. So the gas counterpart. Um, for a three row SUV, all electric SUV, yeah, that's, that's very, insane. very good. Very good. No, it's a, by no means affordable, but I say the price point is very good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do not have that kind of dough. <laughs> What's the range? Um, this the range on this specific trim level is four eighty nine. And then what you're going to see on the Telluride is your um, fuel gauge on a full tank. You're probably looking around five sixty five sixty five. We said five sixty five. Five sixty five. Of course, that's going to vary depending on your drive style. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Um, Paul Williams said, "I am late. All is forgiven, Paul." You can be late. Welcome to the party. We're just happy you're here. Yes. <laughs> Hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Yes. <laughs> um, happy Canuck said, season's greetings. I hope everyone has a great new year. You as well. Thank you so much for watching. Yes. It's so nice to see all these familiar, I guess not faces, but names. Your screen names. <laughs> screen it's names. so weird because you guys obviously know what we look like, but we, we know your names and your screen names, so we don't actually know what you guys look like, which is so crazy. This is like a FaceTime where you could see I know. everybody. That would be so cool. I, I wish. Oh, towing capacity. So towing capacity on this specific trim level is 2,000 pounds for the Kia EV9. Kia Telluride is 5,000. If you go up to the X-Pro, X you get 5,500. But wait. If There's you go, more. <laughs> there is more. If you get the all-wheel drive Kia EV9, you also get 5,000 pounds of towing capacity. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Woohoo! Not bad. Um, great vehicles, both of them. Both of them can get your family from point A to point B. Yes. Stylishly. Comfortably. Yeah, safely, tech-wise. <laughs> um, now, you may have to stop for a charge on this one, but like I mentioned earlier, you can get almost 100 kilometers of range, 4.5 minutes charging, mm -hmm. which is nuts. In absolutely insane. Yes. <laughs> um, charge times are great, depending on what the charging is like in your mm -hmm. area, but yeah, very capable all-electric SUV for sure. Now, Shirley, is there any th question you want to answer before we end um, off this video? I don't think so. I think we talked about most. Mm -hmm. Um, if you haven't, please like this video. It would mean a lot to us. And if you have not subscribed again, it would mean a lot to us. Um, we still have a giveaway going on until January 3rd. Mm -hmm. It's my daughter's birthday too. Random. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but if you have not entered that, please head over to at Brantford Kia or at Gabby underscore Brantford Kia on mm -hmm. Instagram and make sure you enter because we want to give you guys stuff. Yeah. And if you didn't already, we're giving away either your choice, Kia or a Hyundai team jacket. Mm -hmm. Hyundai one's awesome. Kia one's also very nice. It's very stylish. Um, yes, so please check out those check Instagrams out. and we can add you to our giveaway. Thank you so much. We hope to see you again on tomorrow's video. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> I said happy early birthday, child. <laughs> I love that.